name is Yusuf Yakubu, and welcome to this session. We will talk about what is digitization. What we learn in this session will be what is digitization, digital technologies used in the classroom, use of various technologies, internet safety, and various uses of social media in the classroom. The skill set for you to learn for this session will be three. First is going to be how do you become a digital confident teacher? What are the tech service skills you need to have as a teacher? And what are those digital safety methods that you need to know as a teacher? I'll start with this talk by John Mayer Kent. The difficulty lies not in so much in developing new ideas as in escaping from old ones. Many at times we realize that what we have at the back of our mind keeps us back from appraising what is new. No matter how much good that is, if we don't let go of those our previous thoughts, we have to take in what is good for us. When we now have computers, softwares all installed together and use them, do you say that is digitalization? We will expect to see your comments in the um, in activity one. Digitalization in education is a process of turning your traditional methods of teaching in paper, pencil, into a digital format such that pupils and students can understand and achieve their goals on objective. This is as stipulated by Falastin, a researcher in 2018. Having a look at this critically, I will expect you to look at this video and tell us what are your thoughts of the type of digital technologies that can, that can be used in the classroom. You use, you post your comments onto the activity number two. Here, the skill set built is basically for you as a teacher to become digitally confident. And for you to be digitally confident, you should be able to integrate digital skills into your everyday life. You need to have a balanced attitude. If you see somebody that does not know how to use digital technologies, you need to bring them in gradually to be able to use them. You should be open to trying new stuff. No matter how much you feel you know digital technologies, there are still new things that you don't know and you should be open to trying them out. You should be a digital communicator. When you communicate, you don't communicate in a traditional format, rather you communicate in digital terms. You should know how to do a digital assessment. Rather than having your students to do your pencil, paper, or pen, paper assessment, you should be able to what, digitally assess them. Then you need to understand privacy because when you're online, people's privacy matters a lot. Then, if you have all these things together, we can call you a digital citizen. Then, we will expect you to tell us what are those technologies you feel we can use in the classroom. Your comments will be highly needed as your activity number three. Tech savvy for teachers. No two ways about it. For you to be a digital teacher, you need to have tech skills. And these tech skills are nothing but the technology you use inside the class. When you use technology inside the class, the teacher makes the class student center because the attention of the students is brought into the class. The students are made to participate actively inside the class. Look at this point here. We have video conferencing platform. With a video conferencing platform, the entire people in the video conferencing are actively participating. Who are these participants? These are actually your students and they actively participate in this, in this situation. Smart video cameras, just like the video conferencing platform, does the same thing. You have another which is a hybrid technology where you have a mix of offline and online merged together. You have the asynchronous and synchronous learning tools 
when you have the asynchronous these are learning tools that you can do just almost like a hybrid but for a synchronous it goes completely almost online then you have your online textbooks rather than going to a library to get to go to the shelves to look for physical books you go online to look for what your textbooks then you have your learning management system which is a very robust tool that will help you to manage your activities of what learning I will expect you to watch this TEDx video and you share your thoughts with us to tell us what you think are the types of digital technologies that can be used in your classroom. This will form another part of your activities of which we will review with you later. Looking carefully, you realize that skill sets you need to build as a digital 21st century teacher we will need to understand from your own perspective of all the things we've done to this point. Share with us your, your, your comments by looking at this, this link, read what is contained in there, then share your thoughts with us as your activity number five. This is one of the most important aspects in digital technologies, internet safety. You will always be online. When you're online, how do you secure yourself? Many things happen, but there are some basics you need to be, they should be at your tips. What is internet safety? This involves the protection of your own self online. How do you implement it in your classroom? You need to have your personal information and photo. Make sure it is not private. You don't expose your details online anyhow. Very importantly, for safety, it is expected you disable your location service to not to tell intruders where exactly you are. Making new friends is quite a big problem. This is what opens up people to cyberbullying. So you just don't make new friends. You make friends with people they are, you know who they are or where they're coming from. Then you need to always turn on your safety mode. These are basically things you need to tell your students and your own self in the classroom. Then you need to have best practices. For you to be secure, you may not know everything. So what are the best practices that have been carried out by people in terms of what internet security? Update your browsers. Many people forget to update their browsers. Updated browsers are room for piracy and room for intruders to pop in. When the browsers are updated, all those holes are being closed by the, by the updates that is being provided. You need to be able to what? Use a strong password. A strong password doesn't necessarily mean your name, your date of birth, but a combination of numbers and characters that is known to you but could be difficult to, be, to, to, um, to guess by someone else. Then the software you use, make sure you regularly what? Update them. Because as softwares, there are many hackers online and all what they try to do is to check to see what are those vulnerabilities on this software such that they can go in and harm your system. Don't get so swayed when you see promotions on your email, you didn't subscribe for, somebody tells you you win $10,000, that is quite a catch. So if you subscribe to those, you are opening up yourself for many, many crises. Then, one vital thing you should always know is your two-factor authentication. This gives you a two-level security on all your applications. You secure yourself, you secure your device. Intruders will hardly be able to guess this. This is what is internet safety. There are various media, social media apps that you use for education. Most of us use think they're just social media, but they are also used for what? Educating people. In your classroom, we know that our students are used to this social media. What do we do? We use the social media to invite them to use in the classroom. You can use a WhatsApp, create WhatsApp group, discuss with them in class. You can use Telegram, Facebook, Twitter. And very interestingly, there are some specialized educational apps that are, that are there. You have your EduBlock, Edmodo, ISTE community. This talks about science and technology. And we also have your TED Ed, not TED Ed this time. Basically, this is what are the apps you use in your classroom.